Bloom syndrome is a genetic disease caused by a mutation at position 2281 on the Q arm of the chromosome 15. This mutation is within the BLM gene and consists of a deletion of six nucleotides and a replacement of the deleted nucleotides with seven other nucleotides, thus shifting the gene's reading frame. This mutation results in a dysfunctional protein. The BLM gene encodes a RACQ helicase. Cells with the mutation that causes Bloom syndrome in the BLM gene are genetically unstable, undergoing a tenfold increase in homologous ring combination when compared to unaffected cells. The mutation also causes chromosomes to missegregate during meiosis 1. Due to the genomic effects of this mutation, cancer is one of the most common symptoms. Bloom syndrome follows an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Individuals who are homozygous recessive for the mutant allele are affected, while individuals who are heterozygous for the mutant allele are carriers of the disease. In a situation where both parents are heterozygous for the mutant allele, as depicted here, there is a 25% chance that any one of their progeny will inherit the disease. The symptoms of Bloom syndrome are a reduction in immunoglobulin concentration and chronic acid reflux, making patients more susceptible to contracting infections, a shortened life expectancy, infertility in men, early onset of menopause in women, increased incidences of cancer and diabetes, and other chronic lung problems. Our experiment asks the question, is there an interaction between BLM and SIR2? In budding yeast, there is a homologue of the BLM gene called SGS1. A short review of the scientific literature suggests that the BLM gene may interact with a gene called SIR2, which is present in both humans and yeast. To test this interaction, we propose using a double mutant analysis in yeast. The first step in our procedure is to use homologous recombination between plasmids that contain null alleles of SGS1 and SIR2 and the yeast chromosomes to create single and double mutants. Then we will use homologous recombination to insert selectable markers in the mutant lines. Finally, we will screen the mutants using URA3 and add six backgrounds to determine expression. To screen our mutants, we use URA3 inserted between two mat loci as a marker for SGS1 expression and add six inserted at the telomere region as a marker for SIR2 expression. When URA3 is expressed, yeast are sensitive to 5-FOA. When AD6 is expressed, the yeast colonies are white. When AD6 is not expressed, the yeast colonies are red. There may be some variegation in the colonies as well. If some of our yeast colonies are white and 5-FOA resistant, then SGS1 and SIR2 act independently in the double mutant. If not, SIR2 or SGS1 could be a suppressor or a synthetic enhancer of the other gene. Another possibility is that there is an epistatic interaction between SGS1 and SIR2.